Hey, Haley McClenny here with Team USA. Um, I was asked to kind of take you guys through a typical training day for me right now and what that looks like in quarantine. Um, so I'm holed up at my apartment. I'm living in Florida right now. Um, thankfully, the weather is absolutely beautiful, so I'm able to get outside and do a lot of the training that I need to do. And I also have um, a pretty awesome fiance slash roommate um, who was a pitcher at Florida State, Kylie Hansen. She won the 2018 National Championship at Florida State. Um, so when we can, she's actually throwing me some of the best BP hands down that I've ever had. So I'm super, super grateful for that. I'm in a really good spot. But I kind of want to give you guys some insight as to what I'm doing throughout the, this quarantine time and maybe some uh, tips and tricks that you can do um, on your own time to make sure that you're maximizing this downtime that you have to, to really get better. That way, whenever your games start back or whenever your practices start back, whatever that is, you can stay ready um, and you can even be better than you were before, which is really, really freaking awesome. So um, let's get started here. So for those of you that don't know, I am a sports performance coach by trade. Um, I actually spent the last two years at uh, Florida A&M University here in Tallahassee working as their sports performance coach. And um, baseball and softball were the um, two primary teams that I was able to work with, which is really, really awesome. So um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in human performance and exercise science, and I also have a master's degree in exercise physiology. So um, strength and conditioning, sports performance, that is, that is my life passion outside of softball. Um, so it's super, super important to me. Um, and with this time, I've kind of been able to get a little bit more creative with my training, as I'm sure a lot of you probably have. Um, I'm using very minimal space, very minimal equipment, um, but I'm still trying to maximize the abilities that I do have and, and trying to get better. So um, typically a day for me is going to start with some prayer and meditation. So usually what I'll do is I'll have my Bible out, I'll have a notebook out, and then I'm uh, using a meditation app on my phone. So what I'll do is I'll do a daily devotional, um, either through an app or whatever devotional book that I'm reading at that time. I'll dive into that. I try to journal and meditate for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour per day. Now, a lot of people are like, oh my God, Haley, that's like way too much. Why are you, <laughs> you know, meditating or whatever for a whole hour? Um, it's really not that long if you think about it. It's like one episode of something on Netflix. Um, but for me, it's just really important to have that self-reflection kind of process throughout the day. So I'll study a little bit. I'll write, I'll reflect, and then I'll try to get into a meditation. And the meditation for me has really, really helped getting in um, just that, that mindset of the present, being present in every single moment. Um, there's a lot of stress and anxiety going on right now. I know for me, there's a lot of personal stress and anxiety about <laughs> a, when the Olympics are going to be, um, you know, and, and things like that. And people have financial issues that they're struggling with. So it really just gives you a moment to pause, be present, be thankful. Um, and that's really helped me a lot. It also gets me into a right mindset before I go and get my lift in, which is typically what I do next. So I'll pray and meditate for roughly an hour or so. And then I will get into my workout for the day, which typically lasts between, if it's a lighter day, about 30 minutes. If it's a tougher day, like today was for me, it'll be roughly about an hour. The warm-up always starts with a dynamic warm-up for me. And that's super super, super basic in general, and that's really open. You can kind of use the warm-up to incorporate anything you want. I like to do jumping jacks. I like to do squats. I like to do lunges. Um, I like to incorporate a little bit of shoulder prehab work just to make sure I'm taking care of this old arm right here because this has a lot of throws in its bank, let me tell you. Um, so I like to try to take care of that. But any mobility issues that I feel like I have, I'll, I'll incorporate that into my warm-up as well. So I know I have... Um, pretty chronically tight hips. So I'll try to loosen those up a little bit more than normal. Um, and I also have a really tight low back, which a lot of people also probably do as well. So I spend some extra time opening up my spine, um, making sure I'm nice and mobile in those and, and stable in those places. Um, after that, so prayer meditation, some dynamic warm up. I'll get into a um, sprint or power type of circuit. And what's really, really cool about this is typically to gain power, you really only need your two legs. And why that's super, super cool is that 
we can maintain strength and endurance both for up to 30 days. So that's pretty good while we're on quarantine. We're probably not going to lose too much of our strength or too much of our endurance. But speed and power typically start to deteriorate if you're not using them within just five days. Five days is not a lot of time at all. So I need to make sure, I know in my training, a priority for me has been making sure I'm maintaining that power and trying to increase it as much as I can. So I'll either do some speed work, which if you were in speed school yesterday over with the package deal, shout out to you. Um, I'll incorporate some sprint and speed drills. I'll also do um, some form of sprints. So today, for example, I did flying tens, um, really just like a build up for top end speed. I did six reps of that before I went in for my lift, came inside for my lift, and um, I rested 90. 90 seconds in between each one, really just working on my max velocity, seeing how fast, how much I could fly throughout that, that 10 yard duration. So it was, it was pretty cool. It was also pretty hot outside the Southeast right now. You guys is getting record, record highs. So I was sweating like a pig before I came in and actually started my lift. Um, a couple of movements that I've kind of been incorporating into, and I'm going to get up and, and demo these, um, for you guys. So let me switch this over here. So you can see I've got, this is my uh, home gym for the day. So it's not a lot of equipment, okay? I've got a kettlebell, a band, and a towel. So two movements I did today that were um, pretty much total body. One was a clean to press, and the other was a kettlebell clean. So you can actually do this. If you have one dumbbell at your house, um, you can do this just with this. So the clean to press, you're just going to start... Dumbbell, kettlebell on the ground. You're going to clean that up, go into a squat, and press overhead. And this is really good to do if you're trying to develop and maintain um, some total body strength. The next thing I did was a kettlebell swing. So I was in here just pumping these out, you guys. I probably did at least 100 of these today. Just went absolutely crazy. Just swinging that kettlebell. Um, that's really good for your hamstrings and glutes, a lot of your posterior chain stuff. Another one of my favorite movements that I was actually um, able to do today, um, a rear foot elevated split squat. Now typically you'll see these in gyms a lot, um, but your couch is actually perfect to substitute as a bench for a gym. So I'll put one leg up on the couch, I'll hold the dumbbell on the opposite hand, I'll come down and I'll come up, down and up, and then I'll switch sides and do roughly the same thing. Now, if you want to make it more challenging, or if you don't have a weight, one thing you can really start to incorporate is tempos. So what I mean by that is, if I don't have any weight, my foot's up on the couch. I can do this while I'm watching TV, too. My TV's off right now, but I can totally do this while I'm watching Netflix. I can take it nice and slow on the way down for a count of five. Five, four, three, two, one. I can hold for five. Five, four, three, two, one and come up. I can do that on both sides for as many sets and reps. That's a really, really good option if you don't have any strength equipment. Um, another movement that I did today, a single leg RDL. So we're here, boom. My dumbbell's in the right hand. My right leg is gonna go back. I'm gonna balance on my left. I'm gonna get a good stretch in my hamstring and come back up. Maintaining my balance as much as possible. Core staying tight. Back staying flat. Everything's nice and easy there. So that was my total body and lower body stuff. I did a ton of push-ups today, also incorporating the tempo with it. I did a five-second eccentric, um, a two-second ISO, and then I went into a yoga push-up. So again, if you don't have a lot of equipment, I think in, um, combining certain movements is really, really beneficial. So when I say yoga push-up, all I mean is a push-up into a downward dog position. So I was here, I was chilling, five, four, three, two, one, freeze, one, two, push up into a downward dog. So get a good stretch in my back, I'm back down, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, up, and into a downward dog. I probably did between four and five rounds of that, um, five to six reps is probably what I would recommend there. If you have a band at home, that's a really easy buy on something like Amazon or anything like that. You can usually find these for pretty cheap. 
But I like to do certain shoulder prehab exercises with this band. So I'll do some pull aparts. Nice and easy there. I'll do some seat belts from side to side. Oh yeah, my scaps are on fire right now. I can also use this band, if I wanted to use this with lower body, I can do an overhead squat here. So I am nice and wide, working on some mobility, and I'm hanging out there. Typically, what you're gonna wanna do with your training is you'll start with your what's your biggest priority at the top, and you'll get into your accessory work after that. So again, my biggest priority right now is maintaining power, because that's gonna deteriorate after five days. So I'll sprint, I'll jump. I'll do a total body movement, I'll do a lower body movement, I'll do an upper body movement, and then I'll get into some core work at the end. That core work can be pretty much whatever you want it to be. Um, and this is, again, a typical lift day um, for me. So, awesome stuff there. If, for example, I wanted to condition instead of lift that day, I would still incorporate the sprint speed work and the jumps. Um, and then I would come back with whatever my conditioning was for that day. Something probably longer distance, no more than, I'd say 100 to 150 yards. And typically you're gonna want that to be interval based. So you're gonna want the work to rest ratio to be roughly one to one. So for example, I would run two minutes as far as I can, I would walk for two minutes. Run two minutes again, walk for two minutes. That's a really easy way. You can do that up and down your cul-de-sac. I've been doing it around my apartment complex and it's been super easy. Have I gotten some weird looks? Yes, um, from the people in my apartment complex, but guess what? They're not Olympians, so they can continue to stay inside and watch Netflix. Um, that's it for the softball stuff. Let's switch back.